Now we just gotta mate the engine to the transmission and see if we can put it all in in one shot here. Okay. So my jet is driving me crazy. It's actually not driving at all. The balance shaft seized on my 2.0T TSI CCTA engine. Uh, and it caused a whole lot of havoc in the timing area, eating into timing guides. We'll show you some pictures of that. So we decided to just pull the engine out and do a revamp. Since the engine's coming out, we decided to put a new clutch in it because we're already in there. We decided to change the rear main seal to the latest revision because it's known to leak anyways. We changed all the timing components, the balance shafts, and decided to do a intake valve cleaning job on this direct injection engine. So we're just gonna show you kind of steps involved in all of that. Just a general overview of uh, my pain. And we replaced the PCV. And we replaced the PCV. Is everyone having fun? Cause I'm not. So the one thing in the manual that I forgot to read is put your car on Craigslist or any other buy and sell and buy a different brand. But since I didn't read that part, let's just uh, go ahead with the uh, money spending. So balance shafts, exhaust side balance shaft goes in there and the intake side balance shaft goes on there. And that's for the balance shaft sprocket, the idler sprocket. Now the balance shaft chain rides on this far in big sprocket. The timing chain is on the second and the third is for the oil pump chain. So here's a close up comparison of the problem. Uh, on the left here, I'll let it focus. Come on, you gotta focus, you can do this. Now what you're looking at here is an out of focus image because this camera's fucking shit. You see this one? This is the new balance shaft. And look at how close the sprocket is to the actual casing here. And look at the other one, how it's all pushed up. See that? This thing, this whole assembly here seized. All these oil passages here just got completely destroyed. There's no screens left in them. This thing's chooched. I don't know where the screens went. They may have fell down into the oil pan. I found some particulates in there. At this point, I've got to do a couple engine flushes and make sure it's all out of there. But I'll never know for sure unless I tear the whole block apart, which I don't have the money or time to do. So, let's work with what we have. How am I gonna get you out now, you f <laughs> Okay, so the next step is cry. Um, once that is done, the intermediate shaft sprocket, the idler sprocket for the intake has to go in. Once we got that in, we need to, um, f I don't know. It's getting late. Okay, I found top dead center. You can see the flat spot right here and you can actually just see the rod right over here. So this is the new uh, crank timing sprocket. On the back here, right there, there's a notch. And that notch is right above the flat spot, which indicates top dead center. I'm gonna take this notch, follow it up, straight up to this tooth right up here, and I'm gonna make a mark on the other face of this, just so I can see where top dead center is on this sprocket, just by looking at the front. Because once this is on, I can't see the flat spot anymore. Okay, so the new sprocket, for the cam timing chain, the oil pump chain, and the balance shaft chain is installed. The little spacer is here, the little white thing here. And then the old crank pulley bolt for now, just to hold it all. So now I can actually rotate the whole assembly ever so slightly. You can see the crank there moving right there. And we're gonna get it to top dead center. I have my little line there. Okay, so jumping ahead, Got the uh, plastic shroud in after all those struggles. <laughs> and the balance shaft on the exhaust side, there is the notch at around one o'clock and the respective colored link. And then another colored link and at one o'clock we see that notch again. And then remember with this sprocket here, there's a dot on it that have to mesh 
into the two dots that are on the balance shaft. Sorry, there's one dot on the balance shaft and two dots on the sprocket here, and they have to uh, mate together. And then coming down here, that's the balance shaft timing link. And uh, there we go. After the chain is in, the guides can be put in, and then the guide tensioner. And then this has to be put in with thread locker. Next up is the timing chain. This cam girdle, cam bridge, whatever, is messed up. The screen here blew out. Luckily I found the screen. I found that this is, there's a service bulletin for this issue and uh, because the part I have has a plastic ring and not a metal ring to hold the one-way check valve or ball valve, whatever, I need to replace the whole cam girdle. So, the timing chain is in, but I cannot release uh, the tension pin um, on the tensioner until I get the cam girdle or cam bridge in, cam bracket, whatever it's called. So once that comes in the mail, should come in tomorrow, I'll put that on there. I'll cut this zip tie, because right now I'm trying to keep everything in time. We can see that we're in time. That tick right there it lines up with that mark. That mark in the chain lines up with that tick. And then down here, there's a colored chain here and a little yellow arrow there. On the balance shaft, we're also lined up. So uh, hopefully all will be good. I also haven't uh, released the tension retainer pin on the oil pump chain tensioner. So far so good though, everything's coming together. It was really difficult to get this chain on. None of that was filmed because it's just been really stressful. This is the first time I'm timing this engine. So I just want to do it right. The next thing to replace is the PCV because why not? We're already blowing a small fortune on fixing this piece of crap. May as well spend a little more. <sighs> okay. Let's do this. This is the latest part revision. It's the uh, serial number ends in AH. Fucking. There's the tensioner. Right there is the colored link and the arrow for the crankshaft timing location. Coming up, that's the arrow for the exhaust cam. Why is my camera focusing on the desk behind what I'm looking at? Over there is the little notch right there for the intake cam. So, I think we are good. I think we are good. That was in the same place, I think it's some sort of lock. I'll leave that alone. All right, now I'm gonna pull the pin for the oil pump. Just like that. And now we got some tension on the uh, oil pump chain. Less tension, but still tension. <sighs> I feel better now. Okay, I removed the donut after putting the lower timing cover in and then very carefully put the crank pulley on, turn the engine over a couple times, everything was still in time, put the plastic upper timing cover on, and the uh, solenoid for the, I'm guessing the VVT actuator. The oil pan has to go on now, then uh, I'll do the rear main seal right here, and then the clutch will be ready to go in, and uh, then we can put the transmission on and try to bring the whole unit into the car. That should be pretty fun. Pretty funsies. Right now Julian's just cleaning the intake valves and uh, we're gonna get a lot more flow out of that when we put the engine in. The engine is coming together. I just finished spraying the radiator, the intercooler and condenser. I took everything apart and sprayed it with a hose to clear out some of the fins, but I made sure that no water or anything got inside of them. 
So this should add a lot more cooling to the intercooler and stuff like that. And uh, after Julian's done with the intake valves, we are going to rear main seal and clutch. Replace the rear main seal and the clutch. The only way for us to get the ex exhaust balance shaft out was to pop out that freeze plug that sits right here. Um, and hammer it out. We had to hammer it out because we didn't have a puller and um, it was the only way to get it out. So everything's back in place now. Everything's timed. We got the water pump belt hooked back up to the intake balance shaft. This is the freeze plug that we popped out. There's hammer marks there, but we're gonna reuse it up. We sanded the edge down. I'm gonna put it in and uh, put some uh, silicone gasket just to help it out. We put the old oil pan back on for now because when we put the oil in, we're gonna do an oil change. We're gonna apply some strong magnets to the bottom of the oil pan and let it idle for about 10 minutes just so we can capture any of the uh, fine small metal filings that may have broken off from the sprocket during that incident. Okay, the new rear main seal is on. The uh, next job, as you can see, we have the engine off of the engine stand. That is my new South Bend Stage 2 daily flywheel. The clutch is in there. And the pressure plate. Eric cleaning off the flange right now. Rock on! Rock on! Okay, we're gonna try to mate the transmission to the engine and put both as one unit into the car. I feel like we're getting close. Soon enough, I will have an unbalanced shaft seized engine. So, the new clutch is in, South Bend Stage 2 daily. Um, we have the alignment tool in there, but technically we can take it out because the pressure plate is already forcing the clutch disc against the flywheel. There's our transmission, we made sure to clean the bell housing out. And in there is the uh, new release bearing. And we greased up the input shaft as well. Some light greasing on the input shaft, some high temp grease there. We're gonna leave this cap on the uh, the uh, So guys, the engine is in. We're putting everything back together. We just put the intake manifold on, but we accidentally stripped the bolt. But uh, it should hold just fine. And um, we've got the fuel rail in, obviously, because it's part of the intake manifold to some degree. We've got the high pressure fuel line in, uh, alternators in, auxiliary coolant pump is in, some coolant hoses are in. The auxiliary, auxiliary. Auxiliary. Oh man, Eric. What? You f***ed me over again. What? Is that straight? To, is that straight right there? No, that's supposed to be flush with that. That doesn't make a difference. You f me again. We just finished putting the coolant in. We put some oil in. We've got the front clip on. Got all the lines hooked up. Uh, we're gonna leave the front bumper and the crash bar off for now, just so we have some space to make make sure we have no leaks. And uh, we're gonna, just gonna start it up. We've got the coil packs disconnected. We're just gonna give it a quick crank just to get some oil pressure through the engine and get some oil all over it. And um, hopefully we don't have any issues. Okay, coil packs are disconnected. I didn't hear I didn't hear any valves hitting pistons. That sounded pretty good. So we got the coil packs plugged in now. Julian just crank it for five seconds, just so, or roughly five seconds, just so we can get some oil flowing through the engine before we go ahead and get the engine actually fired up with the uh, sparkies. Okay, go again. Let it Alright, we're gonna get some really heavy duty magnets to put on the bottom of the old oil pan that is currently installed on the engine and uh, we're gonna see if we can attract any metal filings that may be left over from the incident. We got everything back together, bumpers on, everything's good, fluids are good, no leaks. And the engine is running smooth. We just went for a drive around the block there, 
and um, now we're gonna go put some new gas in it because it's been sitting for a month. Okay, so I guess right now you're just gonna drive it nice and easy until everything breaks in, right? Exactly. Yeah. The clutch, the new timing components. We don't want this to happen again. So basically the uh, intake side balance shaft inside the engine seized. We bought a new pair of balance shafts. We replaced those. We had to buy new timing components because the chain was digging into the timing chain guide. It was just a nightmare. Um, but glad you guys could stick around for us. Now we can get back to making some fun videos with our cars.